Okay, you're right. Okay. We give them a minute to catch up. And I'm going to pull up, I'm not going to watch, but uh, pull up comments in case anybody oh. has anything. Look, it's so fun. Look, it's me looking at me. Yes, isn't it cool? <laughs> Look. Look at, they're already catching up. Here we go. Okay. This will be about 20 Why is it blurry? Are you blurry? That is, but this isn't. Okay, they really are about to be blurry. All right. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. 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 Okay, so we didn't do our usual countdown to the show because as of uh, last week and the week before, we were having problems with the countdown. So we're just kind of jumping in, and I know that you guys didn't get your usual kind of, you know, a couple minutes to get comfy, get snacks, whatever, but here we are. Um, so we will give it a second, and then we will jump right in. And as usual, please share with your Facebook friends so they can enjoy this little bit of awesomeness that we do every Monday night. And because, I mean, this is even better because we have a very special guest tonight. Very special. So we're going to get going in just a minute. It's going to be fun. You almost ready, Scott? I'm ready. You want me to intro? Scott always does our intros, right? So let's not change that up. Right. You go, you go right ahead. <laughs> so you ready for me to go ahead and start? I am ready. I figured they'll catch up. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Hello, welcome to TMSM Weekly Live, show number 46 for March 25th, 2019. I am Scott Atwood. Today I will be behind the camera reading your questions and making sure everything's going well on the tech side. As always, Michelle and her chair are ready to interview our friend. You may know him. DJ Chill from the Frozen Summer. That was a long DJ time. Lobot, Star Wars Weekends. Still ball. Still ball. <laughs> DJ Elliot, which he's most known for, but our friend Elliot Hansen is going to be joining Michelle tonight for the show to talk about things he's doing, things coming up, and Star Wars, everything he knows about Star Wars that he can share with us. I know nothing about Star Wars. Nothing. Is nothing. <laughs> so, have a great show. I'm going to go behind the camera. No Star Wars. <laughs> okay, so yes, we have DJ Elliot in the co host chair. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. No, this is really great. Um, so I wanted to tell people, I should have, I didn't tell you this ahead of time, but I wanted to say something nice about you uh -oh. because um, back in 2014, when I was the new kid on the scene here, the first time I met you was opening day of Frozen Summer Fun. Okay. The very first day they did it and everything was kind of a hodgepodge of, of stuff going on. <laughs> And well, you know, when you put an event together two weeks before it opens, you know, yeah, it, it becomes a hodgepodge. I remember you telling me that because I was um, I was with my friend John, a.k.a. Panda. And oh, he, yes. And he introduced me to you, and you were very kind to me, and I never forgot that. So thank you. Hey. And that was almost five years ago. So, so much changes at Disney. I mean, Frozen Summer Fun now is just a... But just a memory. Now it'll be frozen summer fun to electric boogaloo. Yeah. <laughs> do you think do you think that they're gonna do something to revive it? Oh man, they have to. They have to do something. I don't think it'll be at studios. Like it would make more sense probably at like Magic Kingdom, but I definitely think that Disney's gonna take advantage of, you know, as, as we're rolling into this convincing people that, hey, you're gonna wanna buy this streaming app, like I just think you're gonna continue to see, you know, like I would expect I mean, what's the next big thing Disney Channel wise? Probably Descendants. Like, there's got to be like Descendants stuff and and new Mickey Mouse, you know, Mickey Mouse cartoons and Ducktales. I mean, all the, the Ducktales ties into what we're doing in Dinoland right now. So I mean, you know, it's just why would they not? It's the perfect, you know, it is. synergy. And let's let's keep that frozen train going, right? <laughs> I mean, it's so funny because I remember, you know, when we put out information and it's like frozen or oh, it could be anything, but. You know, people are like, enough already, or, you know, don't shoot the messenger. But I think that, um, you know, I, okay, I'll admit, I actually liked Frozen Summer Fun. I, thought, I did too. I thought the fireworks were great. I loved your, your DJ set. Thank you. Because, um, cause as they know, I, I'm i kind of like a techno junkie. <laughs> I love dance music. Anything that's a awesome. boom, boom, boom. And I will dance in my car. I don't care. Um, I will embarrass my children. I don't care. That's just, I, I love that kind of music. So I think that... Well, we never we never got our electronica here at Walt Disney World. Like, oh. That was what I always wanted. Like, you know, Disneyland had electronica and it, it killed and everybody had such a great time. But we just never got that. So we, you know, I very... I, you know, I tried to do what little I could do, you know, between Star Wars and then Frozen and then uh, there was some summer one, I forgot what it was called, and then Club Disney, we did, I that was, that was short-lived too, but just, 
And yeah. I liked Club Disney as that well. Really cool, yeah. I thought that was a lot of fun. And I remember when they closed that, a lot of people were, were disappointed. Well, it's you know? the it's the never ever changing park. So it really is. So, so before we get back into like current <laughs> things, um, I wanted to kind of um, for our 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 viewers to kind of get to know you a little bit. Uh, so I thought maybe you could talk to them about like how you started working at Disney. Maybe give us a little backstory, maybe fun stories, whatever, whatever you want. We're, we're here to listen, so let's go right ahead. <laughs> All right, so uh, I came to Disney in the fall of 1997. It was August 28th, actually. I will never forget. Uh, I was a part of the Walt Disney World College program. Oh, nice. I did. It was nice. I, I had three days of traditions because it was a lot back then. So uh, two days of like traditions, traditions, and then the third day was like half day rules and regulations meet the union and then the other half of the day you went to your work location but back then they like didn't tell you where you were gonna go oh. and when I went to my uh, like recruitment seminar at, and it was at the University of Texas uh, they picked there's probably 500 people in the room and they picked like 10 of us so it was a super small group back then uh, lived at Vista Way oh. um, so got there and third you know every day we got there it's like all right Day one, you're going to attractions, and I was like, sweet, because my dream, Jungle Cruise, or Great Movie Ride, or Backlot Tour, those were the three places I wanted to work, because as a kid, uh, we lived in, uh, I was born in Minnesota, grew up in Austin, Texas, and so oh, wow. every vacation, our family would come to Walt Disney. So you were a Disney kid, too. Yeah. Okay. Like my to the point where, and I, I would, if I had kids, I probably would never do what my parents did, which was like... We'd stay at the Swan Dolphin, and they'd be like, "Here are your room keys. We'll see you tonight." Just, <laughs> and we, my sister and I, would just run off and run around and do whatever, uh, and then just meet up at night. It's crazy that you know they let us do that. I don't think many parents would let anybody do that nowadays. Well, prob well probably not. It's, it's kind of different times now. Yeah, yeah true, true. I mean, you got to be careful. I mean, I did drink water out of a hose back then. So yeah, <laughs> pretty sure I had lead poisoning or something like that. All, all kinds of stuff. My exactly. how times change. Okay, uh, so when you got through through that. So yeah, so I found out my first day attraction. So I was like, sweet. And then the second day, they're like, you're going to Magic Kingdom. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to Jungle Cruise. And then on the final day, they're like, you're going to Fantasyland. And I was like. There's no spieling attractions in Fantasyland. And then when I met my trainer, they're like, you're going to work at the Skyway. And I was like, what's the Skyway? <laughs> and uh, I learned very quickly what the Skyway was. And, uh, and yeah, so actually, but my very first official day at work at Walt Disney World, it was raining super hard, so the Skyway was closed. Oh. Uh, and so they said, hey, so since the Skyway's closed, we can't like take you over and train you. But what we can do is, is we need your help over at It's a Small World. It was closed for rehab. Um, and so I shoveled money into a bucket and pressure washed the concrete floor. And I was like, I don't know. What have I signed up for? <laughs> and it was, it was really weird because my first three months at Disney were actually really miserable. I had a miserable time. Oh, that's awesome. I hated my job. I hated, you know, I, I didn't really like the people I was working with. Um, were you just disenchanted with the whole thing of what you thought it might be and to actually what yeah, it was? Yeah, I really think that was. It was just... You know, I was a human bumper, you know, because we would bring the cabins to a stop, put four people in them, throw them around the corner, and, and just did that all day long. And, and, you know, especially then, as I worked at Disney longer, I learned that as a full-timer, you don't want to get to know these college program kids because, you they know, don't stay. four months from now, they're gone. Right. So my first, you know, two months, these guys that I work with every day had no interest in getting to know me because I would be leaving in four months. Right. Um... I didn't think of it that way. No long-term friendships to make yeah, people so, want to Yeah, uh, so, and I didn't work with any other college program kids. I just, there were no other college program kids at that at gig. Wow. And I got injured, and so then I started doing a lot of parade audience control, and I just, I had that moment that most people have at Disney where you just stop. I was walking up, walking up the left side of the castle, and I tripped, and I fell, and I, I, I just leaned up and saw this beautiful pink castle. <laughs> And I said to myself, you know, hey, like, you're at Disney, like, make the best of it, like. You, you gotta know. come to Mickey Mouse. Yeah, it is, it is what you, it, it is what you make of it, and it, it totally changed my, uh, changed my outlook, and I had a great time, and I got to know everybody, and uh, figured out that, you know, cast member, break room balance, it's very hard to yeah. figure out when you work at Disney, and uh, then decided I was gonna stay, because I had finally found my home, I didn't really fit in in Texas. Uh, I found my people here in Florida, and uh, one of the saddest days of my life, though, was the last day of the college program because all of a sudden, there are 
a thousand people that you know and they all go home one day mm -hmm. and everything's the same except all your friends are gone. gone that's sad so, but I, I had gotten a part-time job at the Jungle Cruise so I went and started my job at the Jungle Cruise I uh, did that for a couple months then went to entertainment and uh, yeah just had my brief little career at Disney so so did you did you enjoy doing the Jungle Cruise? Loved it, loved it. I, so I did the Jungle Cruise, then I went to entertainment. I was in entertainment for a while as you know, friends of Tigger and those type of people. Mm -hmm. um, was supposed to be trained at the Legend of the Lion King puppet show, but never actually got trained there. Wait, uh, puppet show? Where yeah, it's I... where Mickey's PhilharMagic is now. It was a. Oh my god! It was the Legend of the Lion King show. Oh my gosh! So you totally forgot about that, I didn't did. you? I'm so used to Mickey's PhilharMagic. <laughs> you know, it's like you. When things change, like Disney fans don't really like change as a no. whole, but when it does change, you almost forget about what was, yep. if that makes exactly. sense. And, and that's how Disney works, though. It's like, I know you don't want this to close or whatever, but we're going to make this so much mm -hmm. a good transition. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to railroad you there. No, you're like, good. Oh my gosh. Uh, I was in the Spectre Magic Light Parade. Um, I yes, love that Yes, that was Magic. one of my favorite, favorite times, and it was there where I met this guy named Eric. Eric was friends with the Queen of Hearts, and I was friends with uh, Rare Fox. I'm using my terminology in case there's kids at home. Great. Um, and we started talking, and he, I had mentioned that I had DJed back home, and he said, I live with the guy who DJs at Disney. Would you be interested in meeting him and possibly training with us? Uh, so I started training with a guy. His name was John. Uh, he was one of the DJs at Walt Disney World, and we used to do this little kids' dance party out in front of the Atlantic Dance Hall to try to convince people to come into the Atlantic Dance Hall every night. It was when swing dancing was like the biggest thing and oh, Atlantic Dance that. Hall was packed every night. And we do this cheesy little kids dance party out front every night and it just that's how I learned to be a DJ at Disney and and so even though I was always a cast member kind of in the background, I was always working towards I want to be a DJ at Walt Disney World and right around 2004 was when I finally passed my audition. It took me like four auditions to get hired at Disney. Wow. Uh, and they only do DJ auditions, you know, once. Well, now they don't even do them anymore. Uh, they usually happen about, they happened every like one to two years. And it, they would be terrifying because they'd happen at Pleasure Island. Oh, so you'd be at, uh, my first one was at the Rock and Roll Beach Club. Oh, God. So you're on the stage in the Rock and Roll Beach Club and there is nobody in the room but a table of three people staring at you. And they're like, it's like a movie. And they're like, all right, show us what you do. And then they had purposely set up the equipment so it was was set up wrong so that they could see if you could handle the stress. Oh, God. And I tried to do this chicken dance thing and my mouth got all dry. Oh, no. It was so miserable. And they're like, and they told John, they're like, we want to see him back here in like a year. And so then I went back again and uh, it went a little better. And then I, by the fourth time, I was ready to go. And uh, yeah, 2004, my first event was a Disney College Program event. Um, and then it just kind of went on from there. That's crazy. Yeah. And then speaking of Pleasure Island, um, not to, not to do, you know, change mm -hmm. our conversation, but um, I see people saying Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. Yeah. Um, so like, I know for me when I was a kid or even a teenager, I couldn't wait to get be old enough to get that almighty wristband <laughs> to be able to actually go in all the places. Yeah. You know, um, and I know that a lot of kids today, they're like, Pleasure Island. No, and, and it was such a thing back yeah. then. And it was exciting. And, you know, like I loved mannequins because, again, yeah. that was my kind of music. Oh, and that revolving dance, dance floor. dance floor, and, yes. I mean. And there's so much, like, little things that nobody knows. The Mannequins Dance Palace at Pleasure Island was the very first nightclub in America to have a CD player. Really? The very first nightclub in the United States to have a CD player. Yeah, absolutely, from Pioneer. Get out. Craziness. That, no, fun facts, like you guys. Like, things you would never know. <laughs> like, just those, 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 like, who would have ever thought? But yeah, no. No, and, and you know what? I really think, let me ask you this. Do you think that, like, I mean, now in the in, in this day and age, well, at least in the past several years, you know, Disney's all about, like, the dance parties mm -hmm. and the different things. Um, I sort of kind of miss the fact of that nightlife. You know, a place where, you know, like Pleasure Island, like the... I mean, the kids can walk through and do mm -hmm. shopping or whatever, but like, do you, you remember the um, the New Year's countdowns at midnight and the little bit of fireworks and the parties and the you know like the you know comedy club and you know ventures and all that stuff? Do you do you miss that sort of thing too? Oh, um, no? see, I got to see it from both sides, so I got to experience it 
as somebody going to experience it, it was great. As somebody on the other side working on the on the other end, it was such a non magical experience. Really? Yeah, it really was not. I mean, you're dealing with drunk people at Walt Disney That's World. That's true. And whereas, say, I'm working downtown in Orlando, and somebody comes up and is rude and mean to me, I can tell them to go, you yeah, know, whatever. Exactly. You but can't it, do that at Walt Disney World. Yeah, it's one know, of the hardest things about being a DJ on the cruise ship, is because you still have to have that Disney, Disney yes, magic, whatever you want, super nice. service. But yet you have drunk people belittling you and being rude and angry. And I you're never like, thought of it that you're way. You're like, I'm going to close this door and pull these shades down so they don't know that I'm in here. Um, I just, I don't... Do you think that's part of the reason that maybe they did away with it? Or no? I, I mean, they made the... I think they made the decision that was probably right because I don't, I don't necessarily think the clubs at CityWalk necessarily do super great either. Mm-hmm. I mean... I mean, I like... The, uh, I like the, the the option. Like, I think that's why I liked Club Disney so mm-hmm. much because you could have that kind of club environment, <coughs> but nothing uh, offensive or nobody no. staggering around, and it was fun. No, absolutely. You know, and I think that's the same thing. Like with Star Wars weekends, um, the the dance again. I'm such, a, <laughs> I'm such a geek. The the dance parties were like my favorite part. Well, hey, I'm I'm a fan of that. So we, I, you know, I know that. The team that we that worked really hard on putting those together, like that was really our intent was like, look, there's nothing like this at Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. How do we do something different? Because at the time, um, when I learned to be a DJ at Walt Disney World, I didn't know how to mix two songs together. In fact, believe it or not, I didn't listen to secular music on the radio until I moved from Minnesota to Texas. Really? The first song I ever heard on the radio was Wild Wild West by Escape Club. Until then, it was church music, and because my dad was the minister of music at our church, oh, wow. so that's all I grew up with: movie scores and and uh, I think one of the first cassette tapes I got was the Cocktail soundtrack. So stupid. No, it's really not. <laughs> and you know so what? like, so this guy John trains me. He's training me in Florida, and I remember he took me out to do this pool. He's like, so when you're DJing at this pool, you should play like you know, like Jimmy Buffett and Bob Marley. And I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking. About. You didn't know. And he'd be like, like the, you know, like the Beatles, and I'd be like, the Who? Who? Like I didn't know any of this. Wow. So like, there are still to this day, like uh, there, there. This kills me to say this to everybody. There are Queen songs that I just heard recently that I'm like, this song is amazing. Wow. And my wife is like, are you kidding me? Like this is like the quintessential <laughs> Queen song. And I'm like, this is a great song. I love it. She's like, well, you should. See, you know, it's 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 funny to me that you say that because. Um, I am like the exact opposite of, of you, and I'm going to tell you why. This is really good. I have a point here, you guys. Hold on. Okay, so when I was a kid, my dad was in a band. Okay. And he taught me, like, well, my brother is nine years younger than me, so I was like, you know, his buddy. We did all these things, and we'd sit in the basement in Michigan, and we'd go through his record albums. And we would, he would, I, I know so much useless music trivia. <laughs> it's like, I can't tell you anything about math science anything important but I can tell you who sung what in 1983 and I don't know why but it's funny because like that's how I grew up and then now my dad plays in the church band so it's like <laughs> I complete like opposite of, awesome. of you you know that's and so it's cool. just but it's kind of cool in, in your in your perspective because like you almost get to see things as a brand new for like the first time like so, like you said queen stuff yeah. But I think it's amazing that you went from not having like that kind of a background to what you do now. Well, and I think that's what helped because the real, the one thing we wanted to make, well, the one thing I wanted to make sure that I was doing at the Frozen parties and the Star Wars parties is, all right, so EDM and, and dance music is super popular right now, but there's no lyrics. Mm-hmm. But all the kids know what this music is. Mm-hmm. And then I've got all these adults who, if I don't play music that the adults like, they're going to take the kids and no one's going to be here. I mean, that's the trick to a dance party. Like, the dance party is, I'm playing for the adults. And realistically, especially Star Wars weekends, I was playing to, like, eight people. My eight friends I was playing mixes <laughs> that I liked and I knew they were going to like. And that group of eight people kept growing and becoming right. more and more people. And they'd get the inside jokes. Like, I'll still play that Star Wars shot mix. And I know who my people are because they're the ones that do this. And I'm like, right. and they're really the only people I'm DJing for because... The other people are going to stick around. That was kind of the nice thing with Frozen. Like, they're not going anywhere. The fireworks are going to happen. Like, right. They're going to stand there no matter what I do. So I'm going to try to play something they've never heard before. And, and I think that's kind of cool because, like, you know, like for somebody like myself who I I used to always tell my kids because we'd listen to, like, like dance music mm-hmm. in the car. 
and I'd always say, kids, everything's better in the remix. It just mm-hmm. is. Because it is. To me. No, when, when I could, <laughs> when, when you can take, you know. Like, let it go. Like, you take <laughs> it and you go boom, 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 and you turn it into something yeah. that the kids are, the kids are, are down with it, but then so are parents like myself mm-hmm. who love booty shaking music like I do. Oh. So it's kind of like, you, you find that balance of, of keeping the kids happy, but yeah. keeping the adults that was happy. My, and that was my favorite, was I, I knew that nobody was there to see me. And that's, that's kind of how, in everything that I've done, my the motto that I've adopted is it's not about me. Right. Like realistically, they're not coming to see me. They're coming to see the fireworks. They're coming to see the Disney characters. Maybe one or two people really care about me, but it's it's not about me. Why well, I appreciate it. <laughs> but I did. If I can, <laughs> if I can make a mom and a dad and two kids scream and sing and dance and have a great time, that's what it's about. And that's it's tough because I. I Dance parties have that weird stigma at Disney because it does seem to be the go-to. Because mm-hmm. um, they're you know relatively inexpensive to do, they're sure. easy to put together quickly, and they're super popular. I mean, our Dinoland dance party we're doing right now, the scores on it are, are through the roof. But we've got amazing characters, we've got amazing cast out there. Everybody's having a great time. Like I think it was not that anybody cares what I think, but I think it was needed back there. I think that oh. that you know at, in Dino Land and in and at Animal Kingdom, um, I I just really I really think that you know that there are people that enjoy that sort of thing and sometimes you know it's a kind of a nice little break for the kids like if you don't if you have your kids there and you don't want to go on rides or you need mm-hmm. a time out or whatever like let's kind of go stand around let the kids dance with the characters and it's I think it's a really good feature yeah I mean I do well and my favorite part about it is I have hired some amazing people to work with me. And most of those people right now happen to be this really great group of women that work for me. Oh, cool. And so you get to go back to Dinoland, and instead of it being a boy DJ, it's typically a girl DJ and a girl MC. And there's a reason why they have the highest score in the park right now, because they're killing it, man. Like, they're Well, they're uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. Um, you know, <laughs> girls doing things like getting in charge and stuff. Cause it's, oh, they're, they're absolutely <laughs> killing it. I, I love it. They, they, make me so, they make me so proud. Because that's the weird thing now, too, is like, you know, as as someone that you know is now in his forties, like I'm not the prime demographic to be doing these dance parties anymore. Like I'm, I'm you know I'm old. You're I'm, not old. I'm, 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 I'm happily I'm, married and a little overweight. Oh, and for goodness uh, sake. And, <laughs> but but I mean I'm not eighteen to twenty five. And I mean, oh. I think you can still kind of stay in in tune with that. I really think that my mind is still like forever Disney mm-hmm. mentality because like I know that our we get we get a little rickety and tired and older <laughs> but like our minds are still like Oh no, my with my hip the way it is. Like, <laughs> I, I, uh, I can't stand there for 3 hours like, like have a geriatric dance yeah, party I, I, uh, I start falling apart. So. <laughs> I'll be passing out Tylenol, you know. I mean, it, there's it's just funny because like sometimes I have to remind myself mm-hmm. like and I don't realize how tired or older I really am until like the next day. Or oh no, I, I what was it? I just the other day, I, I, I rode I rode rock and roller coaster and I got off of it, and my wife was like, "How was it?" I was like, "I think that's the last time I ever rode a rock and roller coaster." Like, I think that was it. I think uh, I think I'm done. You I know, think. it's so funny because I have my boys. They're so used to be like, "I'm the good sport," you know, "Mom, let's go on a roller coaster." I go go on all these rides with them, and I've noticed in the past like years that like. I know we're going to go someplace with coasters. I have to take a dramamine mm-hmm. mean, because I can't do it anymore and I don't want to disappoint. And I yeah. love that stuff and I kind of miss it, but it does change. As no, you that's get why you, that's why the chicken exits were built so that you could just go in the line <laughs> the with exits. them and be like, I will see you at the end or else uh, our day is over. No, it's just funny. We're going to go see those new parking lot signs. Uh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I do miss it though. You know, it's like, I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, I can still hang with you. I'm yeah, good. And I'm like, no. here I am popping my dram so I don't get sick. That's so, horrible okay anyway <laughs> um i told you this is a crazy little show hey man we take like detours all the time we always say sidebar and then we always end up bringing it back um so what do you think is like the most exciting part of the job that you get to do because i know i mean you can tell them yourself but i know that you get to do other things now like really fun things like conventions and different things oh, yeah. besides disney so let's talk about that no i kind of uh a friend, one of my my best friend. His name's Ruben. He's actually the warm up, one of the warm up guys for. He is well. He is the warm up guy for Steve Harvey. He's the announcer on Family Feud. He's 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 my best friend, and uh, 
he told me, he's like, you're one of the best nerd DJs I've ever met in my life. He's like, you know this crowd, you know this music, like you need to lean into it. And he told me that a couple years ago and I said, you know what, he's, he's probably right. And so now, like, you know, I just landed in Orlando at three o'clock this afternoon, yeah. coming back from some, uh, C2E2 in Chicago. We did Emerald City the week before and we've got Star Wars Marathon next weekend and then I'll go to uh, Chicago for Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. You know, and that was kind of, Star Wars Celebration, the irony is, is so, all, so the success of my DJ career, I've tried to figure out like what was the one thing that push it over the edge. Because I was doing the interactive dance party, which was super popular back when I learned with the big Mickey Mouse hands and yeah. everybody follow me and jump around. No one was DJing. Everyone was just playing playlists and, you know, clapping, clapping hands and follow me dances. Like that was what every DJ on Disney property did. And uh, I, uh, I got a job. <laughs> so the irony was because of my car, which you said you want to talk about later. You were going to talk about that. <laughs> I, have a, I have a DeLorean, so I was invited to the very last day of the Back to the Future ride at Aww. Universal. And I brought my car, and there I met this guy, Daniel. And Daniel was the guy who created Push the Talking Trash Can. And so he said, hey, we're hiring some people. Would you be interested in learning how to do Push the Talking Trash Can? I said, absolutely. And that, by far, best job I've ever done in my life. I would still be doing that job today if it was still around. Really? How come? Like, the best job. Because all you did was mess with people all day long. <laughs> it was the greatest. <laughs> you know, people still miss that twist. But the, the irony is, like, there's no way he could still be around today because of YouTube and videos. Because I would have been, I should have been fired multiple times for be things I said. Because of jokes and kind oh, of Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, man, all, like, that was my favorite thing to do. Um, and But because of that job, I met uh, a guy named Tony. Uh, Tony introduced me to this guy, uh, Mark, and Mark was the one that got me involved in Star Wars Celebration. So Star Wars Celebration, to me, was the birth of the DJ Elliott brand. That was when I got my logo done. That was when I decided this is what I'm going to do. And that, when was that? That would be Celebration 5 was, I think, 2010. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. And people, people are like, oh, push. They do miss it. Oh, no, I know. It was, it was super cool. And, I mean, it's, it's so funny because, like, over the course of all the years – at Walt Disney World, there's only like seven people that did push the target trash can in the entire, mm -hmm. the entire run. Like it was really not many of us. Um, yeah, uh, one of the guys still works, still DJs with me, so I, I kept him. Uh, one of them's a show director at Disney right now. He's doing. You met Tony already. So. I, I have. Um, my first time meeting Tony, he was he was he was laying on the floor of the break room, which was so our little break space for push was this amp closet for the Stitch ride. So we had to listen to the Stitch's Great Escape oh gosh. all day long, just over and over and over and over again. Oh, gosh. Um, which was super funny. Um, <laughs> it gets burned into your eyes. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part was when they used to shoot it in. Um, they'd say, and I, I could hear it in the closet, they'd be like, and the cannon is marking. And Stitch would go, polo. <laughs> marking, polo. And like, you'd never really hear it when you were in the ride, but you could hear it light as day in that closet. So, uh, um, so yeah, so I... Star Wars Celebration is what got me started down this really weird nerd DJ thing. And uh, I've been doing Comic-Con since then. And I mean, all over the world this year. I did, I did Africa once last year. I'm going to go back to Africa this year. Wow. Uh, doing a Cyprus Comic-Con, which is off the coast of Greece, I think. Oh, gosh. I, I don't know. I did Scotland wow. earlier this year. All That's over. amazing that you get to travel to all these places. Yeah, this is pretty darn cool. Is it, is, it, is it ever intimidating to go someplace that you've never been before? I mean, like... No, man. Music is universal. That's yeah. the one cool thing that I that I learned is... Because, uh, like, Paris, like, you know, I've gotten to DJ... I, man, I dj events in Disneyland Paris, man. How cool is that? I want to go there so bad. Oh, it was so great. That team over there. Such wonderful, wonderful people to, to work with. So the, so the irony is, like, the six degrees of separation there is... So... A girl from Paris sees me at Star Wars Weekends. Her name is Marushka. And Marushka tells her boss at Paris, hey, we're doing this uh, Star Wars event. You need to bring this DJ Elliot guy. So I go to Paris and I do Paris. And it gets all this online notice. So I come home. Rock in Rio in Brazil sees the footage on YouTube and has me come down there and do an event for them. And then that event is how they saw me in Cyprus. So now I'm going to Cyprus. So it's just going. So like it. they keep and the biggest thing, my epic moment was the Rock and Rio gig. I mean that was like, 
two hundred thousand people or something like that. That's crazy. It was, it was ridiculous. I would be so nervous. All right, so I'm gonna let a secret out about that. The, the Rock and Rio gig, the secret. Ooh, uh, ooh, tell us, we won't tell. Um, <laughs> so I was I was in California uh, training for the for the warm up gig, and I got an email saying, "Hey, would you be interested in coming to Brazil?" And my answer is always yes. Right. And they're always like, "How much?" And I always write back, "I don't care. Like I just want to go." Right. And so they put the contract together. We agreed on a price, uh, which uh, if you're working on your own, find an agent because you should not be the one handling the money because I get all emotional and I just want to do the gig. It's good to know. So write that down. You need somebody to be, because you always have to be the nice guy. I am the nice guy and I have such a hard time. Yeah. We're going to talk. Yeah, I you have can't, you have to have time. somebody else be that person in the middle so that you're still the nice person. Um, so we worked, <laughs> we worked it all out. Um, and so they, they say, they say, we want to set up a conference call with you. So they call me and they're, they, it was very broken English. And I could tell through the conversation, they were basically asking me, can you pre-record what you're going to do and send it to us? Which is one of those things in the industry where some people are like, eh, you like know. all of it or a sample of it? Or yeah. So it I said, I said, you know what? Well, they, they're like, they only wanted me to play for eight minutes. So they flew me halfway around the world to DJ for eight minutes. For eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yeah. Wow. So I said, look, I'll pre-produce this for you. I did the track in my kitchen. I sent it to my good friend, Jeff Savage. Uh, he helped me master it. We sent it back, and they produced this amazing light and video to go with it, and it was absolutely amazing. But I walked out on stage. I said, "What's up, Brazil? Thank you for having me." Uh, played the track and then pretended to DJ because they already knew what you were going to do. <laughs> because I, they had. yeah, they had my track, so I, my, I didn't even have power hooked up to the mixer. Like it was. That is crazy. But uh, so that's the secret. So I, I turned into David Guetta there for a moment. So. Most of the most of the big DJs do that. If if you're doing a live DJ show and there's pyro and 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 lighting and video, it's usually pre-produced. Wow, I'm so disenchanted. I didn't know that. Well, I, I, but, I, but, 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 rock, but rock shows are the same way. Like they know their set list. They know right. what they're gonna play because you have to program that stuff. Otherwise, it's not a it's a show, not a performance. So like, okay, sidebar. Sorry, I have to oh. ask because like when we were in, when we went to D23 in 2017. Um, we did go to Vegas. We just like just yeah. a, a quick a quick trip, and I noticed that Calvin Harris was DJing in one of the clubs one night, and it was like this huge draw. Um, and I, I wish we could have stayed because again, mm -hmm. my type of Don't thing. You. Oh my gosh! And I, the kid, I'm like Calvin Harris is playing, and and the kids are like who? But um, <laughs> but like stuff like that. I mean, does does everybody? I I wouldn't know what the percentage is. I would say that there's probably it just it really when you walk in and if you can tell it's a program light show and a, and a, you know there's video if like the more content that's tied to the show the more likely the performances are even. Well, pretty. I can I guess I could see that because what you're doing it is a performance. It's the yeah. whole thing. But on the, on the same time too though, but it's his music. He right. has created that music. Right. He's already put in the time. So, and that was mine. Like, I created music for that event. So, I'm not really pose it. I'm not, I'm not a poser because I am actually playing this music. And it's your stuff. Yeah. So and same thing. Like, like, even Frozen Summer Fun. And right. Like, there were, there were some times I would play, like, a pre-mix of, like, three or four songs together because, like, the last, the last 15 minutes of the show was always the same. Because we had to start rolling time code in order to make sure that the fireworks went off at the right and time. And see, I was going to ask you that um, without trying to be too invasive. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I, if I ask you something you're not supposed to say, you're supposed to ask. Because I remember, um, you know, like towards the end of, I don't know if it was it Frozen or was it Star Wars that you played "Don't Stop Believing" by Journey towards. Pretty the much end. most most shows. Okay, and I was always we always knew that the fireworks were coming when we heard that yeah. that song. And not that we, we did go quite a bit if you Hey, no, 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 that's fine. The best part of that, though, is he intros it where you kids know this from Glee. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody over 30 See, knows this from it's, the, it's the same joke. If you're over the age of 25, this is Journey. If you're under 25, yeah. this is Glee. I tell that joke every time I said it this weekend. And because in, in, <laughs> and, and for <laughs> us, it was always like a, a cool thing because, you know, we were from Michigan and uh, the whole born and raised in South Detroit thing mm -hmm. is like a big thing oh, yeah, in yeah, Michigan. Yeah. You turn down the music and everybody would scream it. Like at like Red Wings games, Tigers games, everything in Detroit. So it was like, it was a thing for us. So we'd be cool. like, okay, this is what we're, you know. And we still yell, South Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about the DJ, though, it's not for 
friend, it'd be similar to how a, a musician, when they did videos, they yeah. pantomime the video. Yeah, same they created the whole thing, but they put it all together. So it's kind of the same thing, just yeah. in a live version. That it's a really good point. Makes sense, so, yeah. To make sure nothing goes wrong when you're live. You want to well, that was it. Like, I'm in front of all those people. I don't want to screw up. The only screw up that happened was uh, BB-8 came around the corner, and he's rolling around on stage, and he hit a wall, his head fell off. And that was prior to his head falling off in the movie, which so now it's canon. So BB's <laughs> head comes off, oh. and I'm pretty sure that they put it in the movie because his head falls off all the time. And wow. so if you think back to episode eight, he comes flying. They blow up the hangar, and BB-8 flies to the air, and his yeah. head falls off. And BB-8 grabs his own head and puts it back on his head. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's in there because of uh, the at the theme parks request. I can't oh. confirm or deny that, but that's my guess <laughs> is that they're going to make it canon because that's that's how it works. Okay, so I have <laughs> interesting. Okay, I have a um a question. What do you? What would you say is the best memory you have of all the fun opportunities that you've gotten to do? If you had to pick one, I DJed a party at Star Wars Celebration. Um, it was a it was a fan mixer, and it was my very first like fan mixer, and it was the first time I realized that I was in a room of people just like me. And it was really bizarre because it looked like an an eighth grade high school dance (laughs) where it was all these boys on one wall and all these girls girls on on the other wall. And then like three guys with lightsabers like swinging around on the center of the floor and nobody was dancing. And I'm playing really good music, having a good time. And I turned the microphone down. I I turned the music down. I said, hey, look, I said we're all the same. And I say this at every convention that I go to, especially when you go to conventions and you're around. Look, we all like take D23, for example. We all like Disney just a little bit more than the average person because we're spending all this money, we're traveling around the world, we're standing in lines for 17 days. (laughs) We're doing all of this to be together. So let's have a good time. Like it's a Star Wars celebration is great because you can you can be anywhere and turn to somebody and know I already have something in common with this person. Yeah, that's great. I already love this thing so much that I'm here and they're here and we're here together. Let's talk. And so I, I, I made that speech, gave them essentially permission to dance, and they danced. At the end of the night, this girl came up. She gave me this napkin. I had this napkin framed in my office. And it says, I don't know if you were really a nerd or not in high school, but tonight you made us all feel real special. Thank you. <gasps> and it killed me. Like Even, oh <laughs> even right now, I'm like, all right, hold oh, it together. Oh, that's um, wonderful. And it just, it, it was that moment of like, cool, I got to, I got to make people all feel the same and we had the same moment just this last week in a c2e2 and it really was just a moment of like hey look like we all had a hard time growing up you don't have to worry about that here this is your safe space you know i want to see a, a, a big party at d23 they, they you know i keep anytime i see michael vargo i'm like bring me out please like please let me do something with your event like let's have a party let's get everybody together and just acknowledge that we're all weird but yeah. we all, but we all love this thing so much that we're here. Just let us have this time together. You're like legit gonna make me cry. <laughs> like seriously, because I, you get it. A lot of people don't get it, you know. And especially, I'm not gonna go on a tangent, but there's a lot of people in the Disney community that like to fight with each other yeah. over silly things. And and even in in what I do as far as reporting and stuff, there's so much, you know, things that shouldn't be. And it's like you know we. I stay in my own lane because it's like we all love the same thing. There's plenty of these fandoms to yeah. go around where let's just not take it so seriously and enjoy it. Yeah. You know? No, my, and mine is Star Wars. Star Wars is such a hard place to be right now. <sighs> and I am, again, I, and I support my Reed Pop people 100%. They are fans just like everybody else. And it hurts my feelings to see people just rip them apart. They're trying to do their best to put on the best event possible. And they're dealing with powers above and beyond their control. Working with Disney, working with Lucasfilm, working with Marvel, working with these huge companies that have these multi-billion dollar IPs to watch out for. You can't just run right in and and make something happen. You know, and so I just I just want everybody to just breathe Mm -hmm. and just say, you know what? We all love this more than more than normal people. Because the normal person on the street isn't arguing whether or not that's their Luke. Yes. They're just like, oh, it's another Star Wars movie. They're not the ones that are like, they've got their iPad, their <laughs> laptop, and their iPhone open, 
to try to see if, which one they can load the trailer on faster to watch. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the same thing goes for like uh, Marvel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such a such especially right now be, with you know the next Avengers movie coming out and Captain Marvel and all these things. Um, you know, it's such a, people get so like you know passionate about mm -hmm. these things, and it's like either you get it or you don't. I always say that about Disney, about Marvel, about mm -hmm. anything you can. Either you get it or you don't. Some people think, well, you know, it's not real or whatever. Like mm -hmm. me, I'm going to cry when I go see Dumbo. And I know that's <laughs> not a real elephant, but it, mm -hmm. it, it <laughs> you know, it just, yeah. it's one of those things. But in your head that this these these things mean so much to you yeah. that it, it does matter. No. And you know? it's hard to realize that it means that much to other people as well. And if you sit and talk about it, you can be like, look, I may not agree with your theory and you may not agree with my theory, but we can't agree on the fact that there's something wrong with us because we are totally invested in this right. imaginary thing yeah. that the majority of people don't really care about. It, it, so because we share that in common, we should be best friends. Like, should. this doesn't make sense to me. See, and I can't, oh God, you know, I'm just having <laughs> these light bulb moments with you because you, I could have said, said these things myself and I, I think that I'm weird because I'm like, is it very simplistic of me to think that this is how it should be as opposed to how it is? You know, like people should be embracing each other for these different, you know, we all love the same stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool that you do. And I mean, people, I mean, I'm down here with my people because like my friends in Michigan, why my two best girlfriends, they, they know that I'm mm -hmm. Disney crazy and I love all these things. And that, you know, my husband is like the biggest, you know, Marvel geek and he, all these things, but like pe people back home, Mm -hmm. Like they know, they know that oh Michelle works with Disney. And I'm like, I have to go and explain it. And then sometimes when I go home, they don't even want to know because no. they don't get it. No. They just don't get it. And so I think that when you find your people, you want to embrace yeah. it. No, it's funny because my so I may be known for Star Wars. Like that's the like oh he's Star Wars DJ. That's the thing that he does. And I got that simply by just telling people I was a Star Wars DJ. And eventually one day somebody said it back. So just keep saying what you are to somebody. And eventually they'll be like, oh, yeah, you're the Star Wars DJ. I am the um, next big talk show host. There you go. See, you got it. Uh, but my fandom, is <laughs> my, my fandom is Disney. I mean, I, I legit, I, I found my family when I moved to Florida. I mean, and I mean, Disney and Star Wars, I met my wife. That's so cool. Like, <laughs> and I, I said it, it's funny, I said it at Star Wars Celebration a couple years ago and got quoted in the freaking Wall Street Journal. Did you really? Like about, like, I seriously doubt that George Lucas, uh, thought that people were going to meet their spouses through this space opera that he was going to create. But that's, that's what happened, man. No, Disney's, Disney's how I met my wife, man. Like, I showed up to work one day, and she was my manager. It was a Disney Junior dance party. And uh, they were doing something in the Disney Junior building. And so we were over in the animation building, which at the time broke my heart. Because as a kid, you'd walk through and look at that floor and see the animators drawing. Uh. And so I, here I am. I'm nerding out because, again, my fandom is Disney. I'm nerding out because I'm DJing on the spot where they drew Little Mermaid Ugh. that it now looks like character meet and greets. So right. it's, you know, but that's where I met my wife. So uh, the fun thing was, is I actually got to propose to her in that spot right before they closed it down for, uh, for um, uh, launch bay. So, cause yeah. we didn't know if it was going to like, what was going to happen with that floor. And I was like, well, this is where we met. Like, this is where it has to happen. Like it all came together at the last minute. And it was so funny cause she came, she came home from work. She worked at Hollywood Studios at the time. She was an entertainment manager then. Now she's like a rock star. Um, I married up, so Aww. you know what that's like. Oh. Exactly. So he's <laughs> nodding his head back home if you didn't know. He's like, I got you. <laughs> so, uh, so I told her, I said, hey, like we need to go, we need to go back to studios. And she's like, I just came home from there. I don't want to go back there. And I was like, we have to go back. And uh, that was one of the nights Dave was covering for me at uh, Aussie. Dave was covering for me at the Frozen uh, dance party, and. Uh, yeah, I walked her over and, and we were back there and she's like, we're not supposed to be back here. Like, this is a construction zone. And I went and got permission. Like, I was all yeah, set to go. Yeah. And she's like, we can't be back here. I'm going to get in trouble. If they catch me back here, we can get fired. And so she was walking away to leave and I was like, hey, well, before you leave, you know, would you marry me? And she turned around and froze and didn't say anything. And I was like, yo, we should probably get out of here before <laughs> somebody. <laughs> that's great. So. That's a great story. So yeah, man, that's how I met my wife. So you know, I you know I have to say I love your stories. Those are great, great stories. Yeah, I hope man. you guys are enjoying it too. See, this is like my favorite part of having guests on because <laughs> we get to hear so many cool things, and they don't have to just listen to Scott and I banter. So, uh, yeah. so there's that. Um, and I want to ask you too. Um, everybody's like, what are my stories? Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so like you get to, you being that the op you know you've had all these opportunities. 
Um, have you gotten to meet like a lot of celebrities? And if so, like who was like the coolest person you got to meet? So I, because of my job with the Comic Cons, I have gotten to meet some amazing people. Um, I take a very different uh, approach to it. Um, I'm not a photo taker. I'm not an autograph person. I don't like to do any of that. It's probably because it's drilled into your head when you work at Disney not to do it. Not to do that. But the other main reason for me, and I tell everybody that works for me, the minute that you do that, you're not their equal. Because uh -huh. when we're working on a Comic-Con, we're putting on a show together. And they look at me like an equal. But the minute you take the picture oh, or you get the autograph, or, you're yeah. a fan. You're not, yeah. you're not part of the show. Um, just surprising moments. We, uh, one year at New York Comic Con, we were doing the, it was the press for Tomorrowland and Big Hero 6. And so we're sitting backstage and I'm watching a little preview monitor. And I hear somebody come up beside me and say, hey, what are you watching? I'm like, oh, well, we're watching uh, Hugh Laurie and whoever the girl in the movie was. She's out there. It's like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go out there in a minute. I turn around and it's George Clooney. Oh, cool. <laughs> and just the nicest guy. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like, He's like, yeah, do you think I can like sneak out through these curtains? I kind of want to surprise them. And I was like, I said, it's going to be pretty cool because you've got like two of TV's biggest doctors on stage. Yeah. And he's like, I'm totally stealing that. <laughs> and I was like, cool, man. And we stood back there and talked because he should have been on his honeymoon because he had just gotten married like two wow. days before. Um, super nice guy. You know, we got, you know, we know all the Star Wars folks pretty, pretty well. Um, it was good. Uh, this in Emerald City Comic Con last weekend, I ran into James Arnold Taylor. I haven't seen him in a while. Since oh yeah, I mean the Star he was Wars weekends. Such good to a see big him. presence at Star Wars weekends. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, just weird, weird, random friendships and phone calls. Because the other perk too, like I work at Walt Disney World, so they're all like, "Hey, when we come to Disney, like <laughs> you're gonna get us in for free." I'm like, "You're a multimillionaire. Yeah, I do not need to get free. you into the park for free." Um, that's funny how that's just kind of a universal thing. Like, it doesn't matter if they have oh, enough no. money to go. <laughs> no, my, my, the last one was I had, I had just spent a bunch of time with uh, a celebrity. We'd been walking around Disney for a day, and I was going out to California, and we were supposed to catch up. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm doing press for this new show that I'm on, and I'm, I'm in the U.K. And I said, well, that's okay. I already saw you. Uh, your face is on the side of the building by the airport. And he was just like, ha ha, sucker. <laughs> and I was like, you're a jerk. But uh, it's just, it's so, it's just so weird. My life is weird. But um, it's just funny because the other thing too, and I used to say this because people all the time during Star Wars would be like, oh, we love your performances. They're really great. Um, and I said, well, the funny thing is like, you really only get to see like 10% of what I do. Like the majority of the stuff that I do is behind the scenes, you know, a lot yeah. of the producing the music and trying to put stuff together and, and, uh, you know, hustling. That's my big thing. Like I'm a, I'm, I'm not a Disney cast member. I'm an independent contractor. Yeah. So I have to hustle, man. Like I have to, you every, do. every gig I get, I have to go find myself. So y you do. And I think that that's where a lot of misconception is too, because like people assume like, oh, you work for, for Disney. No. I, yeah. I work with Disney. Yeah. I don't work for Disney. And you have and you do have to hustle. No. I mean, no, I get the, it. The only way I get it, the only reason I get it for free is because my wife works for Disney. No. <laughs> I she, buy my pass. And I have a silver <laughs> I have a silver pass. She is fancy. <laughs> She's fancy. She is gonna be an executive someday and then I won't have to do anything but sit at home with our two little dogs. Aww. <laughs> and it'll be great. great. Oh, these are great. These are great. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about really quick, um, what do you think about Galaxy's Edge, since you're such a big Star Wars fan? I'm excited, man. Um, it's going to be really neat. Like, they're knowing little things that the rest of the public doesn't know yet. They're, it's going to be some really cool stuff. Um, I'm excited to see how the rollout's going to work. I would have liked to have seen them both open at the same time. I, yes. I think it would have been a smarter way to distribute the amount. I... I've always felt like Disney underestimates the power of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, as someone that knows Star Wars, I just I really think that they underestimate the amount of people that are going to try to get in this land. But it does look like they've at least prepared for it. It's such a huge area, like you know the the, the overhead views that they've mm -hmm. shown. Um, even like you know when before they changed the entrance of the studios, when you would go in through the back, mm -hmm. you could see just how massive this yeah. area is going to be. Um, 
And I think that it's going to be totally needed because you've seen the jokes and stuff that people yeah. lining up at the Florida State line, yeah, yeah. you know, like Galaxy's Edge line, third tier. Yeah. I really think that it's going to be, um, it's going to be insane. I yeah. really, <laughs> it's going to be crazy. I, I just, I, I just hope that I get to somehow play a role in opening uh, and that I get to be there. I just hope that's the other thing too. Like there's never a guarantee. I'm nope. going to get a gig like nope. You know because the truth is and, and this is the, the you know The thing that we ran into with the last year of Star Wars weekends if you remember the last Star Wars weekends the first week I was DJ Lobot mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the next weekend I was just DJ Elliot mm -hmm. and it was well there are no DJs in the Star Wars universe so the only DJ in the Star Wars universe is DJ Rex and he's gonna be in the bar with you so. Jeez. So how's that going to play out? So does that mean I put myself out of work? <laughs> but it's a little bit nerve wracking, you know. And, and I think I think just to touch on that a little bit, when you are freelance and you do your own thing, um, you know, if I've, I've already had people say to me, "Well, you're so lucky, you're going to get to see Galaxy's Edge." I hope time. so. I hope so. <laughs> you, know, you know, I hope so. I hope Disney thinks I'm still doing a good job. I know both months. both Mark both Mark Daniel and I both are like. I, I hope we get I to hope be there. I hope so. And, and you know what? And I always tell people if I'm if I'm lucky enough to be invited, because mm -hmm. I was invited to do the, um, the big press day for Toy Story Land. Oh. And I still, you know, I don't know about you, and I, I'm sure since we think a lot, like about a lot of things, when you get to go to these events and do these things, it, some I still have those moments that I can't believe I'm here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can't believe, and, and but I have self-doubt too. Like, like when I was, you know, the big press day for Toy mm -hmm. Story Land, they had the international media, they yeah. had all these things. And I'm walking up and my stomach is hurting and I'm just like, oh my God. Oh no, I did, <laughs> I did Disneyland After Dark Star Wars Night for May the 4th and I got to DJ on the Tomorrowland stage at Disneyland. The Beatles played on that stage, man. Uh, like every major, like just the history. And it was so funny because like everyone I worked with, I was like, oh my God, this is like, the coolest thing ever and they're just like what are you talking about it's tomorrowland stage man you're like but no there's more to you're it. like the history in the spot like yes. i i just couldn't thank them enough for bringing me out there and letting me be a part of it and they're just like this is wednesday for us and i'm like well this is the most exciting day of the year for me right exactly <laughs> and i think that that gratitude is is something that is so important because we know that we're, we are lucky that we can oh, do absolutely. these things and it is it's, it's awesome look there are t there are tons of djs out there and if you gave me three days, I could probably turn you into DJ. It's not that it's not that complicated, especially if you're telling me that you know the music that you know. It's not really that hard. I do, and it's just one of those things that I don't even have any shame. <laughs> it's just one of those. I just I can't help myself. No. That's why I was like, anytime there's a dance party, I'm like all about it. I mean, like when I saw you last summer at Animal Kingdom, I didn't even realize that was you because my eyes are terrible. <laughs> and when you came down to say hi to us, I'm I'm, like, I'm just went there to listen to the music. Yeah. And like I know the kids are kind of because they're teenagers now, and it's kind of like, oh, we're gonna go on a ride, we're gonna go Everest, and I'm like, I am perfectly content to sit here and listen. Well, to Well, now music. and now, what's super great, and what they did such a great job with in Dinoland is, it's not just by the truck now. They broadcast that music through the whole land. Really? Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are from from the from the time the dance party starts at five o'clock till it ends at eight. It is through the entire land. It's kind of weird when I leave the truck to go to the bathroom, and you still hear the music you're playing. And you're like, well, this is kind of weird. But yeah, it's, it's oh my gosh, way. I would be all about that. I haven't, I've been so busy lately that I haven't been able to get to the parks for fun yeah. as much because we go cover for events and such. But I, I was just saying, um, we just, you know, we covered a convention this weekend. Mm -hmm. Two weekends ago, we were in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah. And I was just telling Scott, I'm like, I need some Disney time. That's not, <laughs> that's not work. But the, you know, it's always work because I don't know how to shut it off. Yep. You know, you're always thinking because when you work for yourself, you don't get holidays off. You mm -hmm. don't get you don't get a, to shut it off at five o'clock. No. You know, you always got to be on your toes. You but always got to be thinking. You love it, so it doesn't necessarily feel like work. This is true, and and people think that I'm a little bit crazy sometimes, but that's okay yeah. because it's if you love what you do, it's not work. No. That's so cliche, but it's true. Yep. It's very true. So, um, I if, if guys, I'm gonna ask him something else, and if you have any questions. You do it now, um, or Scott can maybe can go and um, yes, go back questions. and see. But while we're waiting for questions, do you want to tell everybody about your your car? Oh, jeez. So I have an insane <laughs> side hobby, my side hustle. Um, my favorite movie of all time, Back to the Future. Like that was it. That. Are you going to go to the reunion at Megaton and I, see? All I am not because I've already met all. Oh, well, then you don't need to go. I've already met them. <laughs> I already know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my car is actually being used for 
the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. I will be DJing that that party at MegaCon. So you are kidding me. No, I'm the DJ. Look at my whole my my little geek heart just went. So there you go. So I'll be there. So perfect. That'll be for Moshi Mo well, Moshi Moshi. So he's a good friend of mine, John. He's a good dude. That's he, he puts on really really good parties. So. That's exciting. So yeah yeah. So uh so <laughs> I uh. I bought a DeLorean and was sitting in my garage for a while and I decided I was going to turn it into a DeLorean time machine and over the process, over the course of like two years, I started buying parts online and then I had a friend of mine, Oliver and Terry Holler, they work, uh, they work for the Fox Foundation and they drive their DeLorean around the world raising money for Parkinson's research. Wow. They've raised over a million dollars. That's amazing. They're like the number one like fundraiser in that organization and if you've seen a DeLorean time machine at a show you've probably stood in their car. It's not screen accurate, it's not even close, it's kind of, they call it like the Frankenstein car, but it's doing what it should be doing. My car on the other end, extremely screen accurate because that was important to me. Um, but they helped me bend the flux bands, which is one of the hardest parts to do on the car. So we moved from one house to the other house and I didn't have a place to put the flux bands. So I told my wife, you know what, I'm just gonna put them on the car. And as soon as I put them on the car, it started to look like the car. And then I just went down this rabbit hole <laughs> and within two months had the car finished and now I've owned it for uh, like almost four years now uh, Universal's used it a couple times the couple cool. summers at Universal they did some things with it and and uh, yeah it's it's super fun and so that car turned into a Jurassic Park Jeep I built that for my wife so she could learn to drive standard she never learned to drive standard <laughs> uh, and then I built a pizza plant truck because um, uh, I thought we would be able to use it for some of the Toy Story stuff um, but I didn't really get done in time, so it's sitting in my garage. We use it to like haul stuff around. Actually, right now, in the back of the pizza plant truck is the entire interior of a 1992 Ford Explorer because we're doing. I'm doing a second Jurassic Park Explorer. So. No, why? Why a second Jurassic Park? Because I built I built one and I put pictures online and a dude offered to buy it for me, so I sold it to him and because he gave me a lot of money. So. <laughs> It's funny, as you were saying that, somebody asked, what's the next car build? The Jurassic Park build has been awesome. So we, yeah, no, no. So, yeah, so I'm going to do – I'm doing another Explorer because I never really got to have fun with that Explorer. So I'm getting – so the Jeep is going away because I don't need two Jurassic Park cars. And I don't really need – according to the, the government, I have what's called a fleet of cars. So oh. I have a pretty good tax deduction. Yeah, anything over five is a fleet. Really? So uh, yeah, so just start buying cars, man. It's my it's my best tax deduction. Do actually. they have to be nice cars? It could be any car. No, man. That Ford, <laughs> that, that Ford Explorer I bought, I, I paid like fifteen hundred bucks for it when I bought it. Brand, oh. you know, it was not new. Nathan had asked, um, when are you going to upload some more uh, sets? Because he said your music's what gets in through the days. Oh wow! <laughs> um, so I ran into a problem with SoundCloud where I got two strikes and. I've, I'm waiting for the two strikes to go away because if there's a third strike, they delete my channel. And then all of those mixes that are on there are gone. And there's like over 40 hours of music on that website. But yeah, there's nothing really relatively new up there at all because I'm always afraid that copy protection is going to, you know, all that technology gets better. I'm sure you've realized with YouTube videos yeah. and stuff that you play half a second of a song and they're like, that's our song. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's I really can't even hard. imagine for you, like, yeah. you know, we, if we do. Um, oh, cause I don't own any of the music that I'm making. I am stealing other people's music to make my own music. Like yeah. it's, it's a real gray area. So I don't sell my stuff. I typically just give it away. Um, but uh, you can always go to djla.com and email me because I've got like marathon sets that people can use when they're running marathons with intervals and stuff in them. And those are three hour mixes, man. I've got probably six or seven of them in a Dropbox folder. So it, It's funny because we were at uh, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, would have been two years ago, now, <laughs> and the 501st was directly across from our oh. They were set up there. And the one Saturday night, they had one of the stormtroopers came dressed as a DJ. He had the, he was a uh, all silver DJ gloves on and everything. And he brought it wheeled in his boombox. He was playing his set through there, and so we started talking to him. And I was like, well, if you ever looking for your music, and I gave him the links to your stuff. He goes, I know this guy. I never thought I could get his music. So he That's started so funny. using So yes. now he's stealing so my music. Part, yeah. I will yeah. find you. <laughs> I will search you down. So, so now in Alabama, yeah. they were the they were playing your your uh, Star Wars weekend set at, at a convention. Because he was just playing normal music. I said, you need to Star Wars spin on some of this stuff. And I said, 
You can check out my friend. He's got some great oh. stuff on SoundCloud. You can pull it down and use it to play in the background. He wasn't really just kind of yeah. standing there it's looking cool with the music around. playing. So oh, no. Like, re- re- there's really surreal moments where I'll walk, I, walked, I walked through Electronica one night and heard a track that I had produced that somebody else was playing. And I was like, this is so weird. Because th- that's the gig I wanted. Like, I wanted to play that gig. Oh. That gig looked like a blast. So before um, we go, is there anything like like future plans that you would like to accomplish? I mean, I know that you you get to do so many great things. Is there something that you kind of have your sights set on that you'd like to do? A bucket list. Like a bucket I don't, list. I don't know. Like I've <laughs> I, I, I've been I'm super blessed, man. I have a really I've got a really great gig. I've got some really really great people that work for me now. Because that was kind of the weird thing was like, so I know I can't DJ at Disney anymore because I'm getting older. But it doesn't mean that I can't train new people to do this because I think that um, my standards are super high, and so I I just I have this really amazing team of people um, that just are rock stars, man. I really really am proud of my team, and to get, go out and watch them like do all this cheesy stuff that I created and hear them play mixes that I made and just make them their own. It's just, it's really, really fun to watch. Yes. Uh, it is kind of hard to watch too. Cause you're like, Oh wow. Like they're stealing my job. Oh. <laughs> but uh, on the flip side, like, you know, they're, they're absolutely killing it. So, um, and you're passing the torch too. Yeah. I mean, you know? I can't, and that's the thing. Like I can't, I don't want to be the 50 year old DJ no. and that's the kind of hard, weird, we're at this weird place at Disney right now because there's a lot of us older generation DJs that it's kind of time, like, you know, it's time to let these younger people come in. I mean, it's it's kind of not just with DJs, just Disney as a whole. Like, there's all these older executives and these older people that it's 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 that time, you know. And, and if we can't, if we're if we don't see changes, we're just going to keep seeing the same thing over and over and over again. And especially to Disney, if they don't figure that out, theme park up the street's going to give them a run for their money. Because they're hiring all these super young people right now, hiring most of them from here, from Disney. So, but it's it'll be interesting to watch. So, well, can I? Let me just tell you this from the feedback that I received. You are very well loved, and people would be upset (laughs) if you were not around doing these things. Because I know that sometimes when we put out, you know, different events, whether it's um, Galactic Nights Mm -hmm. and you know these different things, people like is DJ only going to be there? You know, because or New Year's Eve. So um, don't check out on us yet. Oh no no no! <laughs> but I don't I don't make the de- I unfortunately don't make the decisions. I, I'm just I just that. reply to the email and say yes I'm available. Yes so, I'm available. So I will be doing Star Wars marathon next next weekend. So I will be at all Very four of cool. those. Really looking forward to the three a.m. call every morning. I bet. So are you gonna go out to D twenty three this summer? Yes. So I am. I have. Uh, I'm already gonna be out there. Um, I've composed in my head the email that I'm going to write to Michael Vargo saying, hey, I'm out here. You should utilize me. Okay. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I'm going to go because, again, I'm a huge Disney fan. It's it's the one that it's the one that it just – it breaks my heart because I love Star Wars. Like, Star Wars is great, but it's not – like, it's not Disney. Like, when you listen to some of the Disney mixes that I've done, they blow away the Star Wars stuff because, like, I like Star Wars. Yeah. But it's not Disney. No, and there's something about about Disney, but I will tell you a, another another compliment. I know I'm just throwing them at you, yeah, but yeah. Um, when I am not, no, don't judge. I'm not a huge, huge Star Wars mm-hmm. fan, but when we would go listen to, um, you know, the music and such at Star Wars weekends, you kind of put it, a spin on it that I could relate to, mm-hmm. and then I started like the, the the music from the Flippin' Cantina band. That song sticks like glue in your in your head, and it doesn't go away. I was trying it. Uh, so it's like, but when you when you put a little bit of, you know, I think that that, that kind of helps people like myself. That if you're going to these these events for people that you love and your your family and friends, but you're not necessarily the biggest fan, I, I do find that to be a little bit more helpful. If that makes sense. No. What I've also the other thing I've also tried to do too is like, hey, just because a song is six minutes long doesn't even mean we need to play all six minutes. That's right. We can play two minutes of it, and then instead we can play three songs in the span of six minutes instead of just one. And so some people like that, some people hate it, but I just, I'm going to keep throwing stuff at you and eventually you're going to recognize something. And that was the, one of the best compliments I got from a show director was like, every time I walk by, I hear something that I like. 
Yep. He's like, and if I don't like it, like a couple minutes later, it's it's on to something else. See, and, and I think that's great as a fan of music like that. Like if there, a song comes on, it's almost like my dad in the 80s, he DJ wedding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would He's go sometimes and watch. Hi, Dad. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, like you, when he, he would say comments like, well, you know, you play a song and mm -hmm. it falls flat, you kind of got to wait for that song to continue. But when you have like a, a mix going mm -hmm. on, you can, you know, maybe take that one out and put something else mm -hmm. in. That way you got a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah. And right. I think it's great that, that that's how you roll because it's good. Try. Like, you're like, I know. Sometimes. Okay, so um, Suzanne that works for me is already putting down your DJElliot.com in the comments. Oh, and there you go. Stuff. Cool. So, um, so where where can they find you? Just uh, DJ Elliot. Yeah, DJElliot.com. I'm horrible at social media. I have hired a social media person. We're going to try to get ramped up and going before Star Wars Celebration. Uh, I think... Twitter and Instagram or the, the DJ Elliot. It'll be the Instagram with like three photos on it and it'll be like, you know, Twitter with like seven posts. Um, it's, yeah, it's sad, but uh, it's, you know. I gotta do it, man. I know, <laughs> but it's just, I, I, ha I have I have a friend of mine that like, it is his life and I just, it, it is taken away his ability to do his other job and I'm like, bro, like, it's great that you have this huge social media thing, but if you can't back it up with a performance, then... What are you doing? That's really an interesting way to look at it. See, for me, I do this and I do mm -hmm. that and do social media and I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, man. That's why I'm going to hire somebody else. Just be like, here you go. You do it. I don't know how that works yet, but we'll figure it out. So, um, this has been wonderful. I'm so glad that you took time to come oh, no, thanks and, for letting and, me come. and talk with us. And he's, again, he was traveling and he's still, we tried to get, let him off the hook and he still showed up anyway. So thank you so much for that. And Scott, do you want to close out? Let me close show? this out. So uh, you can follow us on at the Main Street Mouse on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and Main Street Mouse on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button. Correct. And then, correct. And, then, and we don't have any upcoming events right now. We've been pushing everything. You know for what? Weeks it's kind of nice to not because we've been doing so many conventions and things. So I'm hoping that April will be a little more quiet. But you know, we'll be still putting out content. And I think our next thing is probably June when we go to Magic City Con. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. I oh, not true. I have a, a media event next week. Um, the uh, new Lightning McQueen attraction at Hollywood right. Studios. Uh, that is, I have an event for that on the third, I believe. So watch for that. And you know, I. I wasn't there something the day before that as well? Planet Hollywood, I think. I, I gotta check my itself. calendar, but <laughs> but I, I do have events coming up, and I will be sure to report everything. So follow our social media, and make sure you follow the DJ Elliot as well. Even if he doesn't post that much, I'm, I'm more, I'm more <laughs> he's working on, on more it. There's good. great stuff coming. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, I, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and thank you guys for watching. And we will see you next Monday night.